Hi, it's Scott Webster with Toyota Technical Training, and uh, I wanted to do a quick little uh, clarification, I guess, on how to measure driveline angles. We've seen some issues with uh, improper measurements here. A couple of things about driveline angles. One, you may notice the way we have the truck sitting here, we're on an alignment rack. Uh, we don't have the rear suspension either drooped or compressed. We're trying to duplicate the actual ride height that the vehicle would be under in a normal situation. That's gonna affect our driveline angle. So we've gotta make sure that we've got this thing at normal ride height. Uh, we also have the wheels up in the air so that I can spin the drive shaft so I can make these, these measurements. Now, one of the scenarios we may be in here is we've got a vehicle that uh, has a, what we suspected is a driveline angle vibration. It vibrates at highway speeds, uh, common diagnostic, remove the rear drive shaft, put the transfer case in four wheel drive, drive it on the front axle only, vibration goes away, I know it's something in my rear drive shaft. So then I would have to make these types of measurements. When we're talking about a driveline angle, you can see I've got my nice magnetic angle cube here on the drive shaft. This is not what we're talking about. This is part of the measurement, but that angle is strictly just the angle of the drive shaft. What makes a drive shaft vibrate is when there is a difference in the angle of this joint versus one or two of the other joints. So we need to know the actual angle of this joint, not just of the drive shaft. So it's gonna involve measurements and it's gonna involve a little bit of math, nothing horrible. So if we look at the joint, you can see that I've got the flange for the transmission on the back here, and this part of the joint is actually bolted to the flange. This part of the joint is part of the drive shaft. So we need to know the difference in angle between the flange and the drive shaft. So a convenient way to do this, on Toyotas at least, we machine the yoke to match the U-joint. So I can take my angle cube and I can put it right on that machine surface, nice and flat, make sure it fits, make sure I'm straight. And I'm always going to make my angle measurements from the same side. So I'm going to get my head in the way here. So that is a 2.4 degree angle. So that is the down angle of the back of the transmission output shaft. Now I need to jot that down, 2.4. Then I'm going to rotate the shaft. I could just take my drive shaft measurement like that, or I can use the machine surface. Make sure I'm straight. I had 2.4. And now I have 5.6. So 5.6 minus 2.4, that's 3.2 degrees. So there is a 3.2 degree angle that this U-joint is running at. We don't ever want that to be more than five. We want it less than five. But that's not the only thing that's gonna make it vibrate. This angle has to cancel with the other angles. So I'm gonna make this measurement, then I'm gonna move and I'm gonna make this measurement, All right? This should be the same. Get my roughly 5.6 degree. So that's this. Then I'm gonna go and rotate the shaft and I need to measure the angle of this shaft, which is 5.1. Point one. So if I had 5.6, 5.1, I've got a half a degree angle on this joint. So we had a three some degree angle here. I had a half a degree angle here. They're both heading down. I'm gonna add those two together, okay? Now, every time these U-joints spin, they create a little bit of vibration because of the design of them. So as long as these two angles cancel with that one, we're going to end up with a drive shaft that doesn't vibrate. So if I go all the way back here, I'm gonna get my final measurement, and I'm at 5.1, that's good, because that's what I had up there. And then I rotate, and I'm gonna measure the pinion flange at 2.1. 5.1 minus 2.1 is three degrees. 
Now, this is three degrees going up. So I got a three degree angle down here. I got a half a degree and I got a 3.2, I believe it was up there. So if I add 3.2 and a half, that's 3.7. This is three, my 3.7 minus my three. I have a 0.7 degree difference between all the drive shaft angles. We want it to be about a half a degree. Um, 0.7, I'm not gonna argue with that. That's gonna make this thing not vibrate because the vibrations created by the front part of the drive shaft is gonna cancel out by the vibration created in the back of the drive shaft. So as long as it's within a half, three quarters of a degree, uh, we don't have a problem here with drive shaft vibration. All right, so we showed you some things about measuring the difference in these angles and getting our actual joint uh, running angle. Let me show you a little flat rate trick. Uh, our angle cues that I've got sitting here on the lift, you notice it reads zero. I've pressed the zero button and zeroed that out to make sure that my cube is zeroed out. But we can use that zero function to do a little flat rate trick here. If I find my transmission output shaft angle here, and while I've got that in the proper location, if I zero it out right now, all that cube's gonna tell me is the difference between the two angles. I don't have to do the math. So right now it reads zero. When I spin this around and find the drive shaft angle, it reads 3.2 degrees. That is just the difference between where I started and what I have now. It's a much quicker way to get our angle. Okay, so now we've measured our angles. Uh, we're pretty sure we have an issue. Our angles aren't canceling. What do we do to fix this? All right, now we have some TSBs that talk about uh, leaf spring replacement. So if you look back here, uh, the angle that this leaf spring has the rear diff mounted, that's gonna change this pinion height. That's gonna make the front of the diff either go up or down by replacing a leaf spring with maybe a wedge in it or uh, some sort of caster wedge in there. Now the TSB, has that built into the spring pack. So that's why we're replacing spring packs. Aftermarket parts, you can get a wedge that would actually change the angle of this diff. Uh, we also may shim down this center bearing. If you put some shims under here, you could bring the center bearing up or down. That was, is gonna change our angles. And we have a TSB that talks about replacing the rear transmission mount. Obviously rear transmission mount, that's gonna change the height of the transmission that's gonna affect this angle. All right, thanks.